What's up investors? Welcome to Lake M Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here bringing you the latest news strategy and analysis to help you make smart investments for late game gains. My expertise is primarily in the area of argumentation and debate, which is a skill that I hope to utilize to help you better understand the crypto world and move the world towards mass adoption. But be advised that that means that anything you see on this channel or on this video is not to be taken as financial advice and is for entertainment purposes only. Now, you're probably wondering about that title down there. No, I am not already giving up on the future of crypto on my second video. This video is not for you people that are already invested in crypto. No, this video is for your friends and family that you care about but are too afraid to enter the crypto space because they either don't understand it or are too afraid to jump in. If that sounds like somebody that you know, like and share this video with those friends and subscribe to the channel to help me to move the world towards mass adoption. Okay, so before I get started with this video, there's a little bit of backstory that I want to give you. So before a new crypto project launches, they usually release what's called a white paper. A white paper is a document that's released to inform investors of what mission they intend to accomplish and outline how they intend to accomplish that mission. Bitcoin, as most of you already know, was the very first cryptocurrency that set out on a mission to eliminate the need for trust when dealing with a third party for your money. For example, banks, corporations, and governments, which we'll get to in a little bit later. As outlined in Bitcoin's white paper, it says, what is needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust, allowing any two willing parties to transact directly with each other without the need for a trusted third party. This is what the blockchain is. The cryptographic proof is the record of all transactions that have taken place since the very beginning of Bitcoin. Bitcoin created the very first blockchain, and since then thousands of other cryptocurrencies have popped up, a lot of them creating their own blockchain, their own record of transactions that have taken place, and a lot of them have even joined the ecosystems of some of these other established cryptocurrencies. And that might sound like kind of a simple difference. All it is is a decentralized system has a public record of transactions and a centralized system doesn't and has it private. That is kind of an oversimplified way of explaining it, but it is the key difference that is driving cryptocurrency forward. Because here's the thing about traditionally centralized economy. There is no accountability or, or proof to demonstrate that the value of your money is being protected or that the money you earn is a fair value of what you contribute, whether that be the labor that you contribute or the, the savings that you put into a bank. This was the reason that Bitcoin was created and the reason that cryptocurrencies are popping up all over the place is because people don't trust the system. Which brings me to my first point of why you should not invest in a cryptocurrency. And that point is that you trust the centralized system and you do not trust or understand cryptocurrency. So when I talk about centralized systems, I'm primarily talking about governments. There's lots of things that governments can do to reduce the value of your money, and it's very common and sometimes intentional. But the point is that the money that you have that just sits in your savings or, or stored away, it's actually losing value as you do nothing with it. Despite people thinking that the value of your money just stays the same always, uh, if you take my government, for example, here in the U.S., the, the government intentionally aims for 2% inflation per year. And I have a pretty good feeling that this year may be bigger than most, but we won't get into that. And in a centralized system, oftentimes the banks work in tandem with the government. And they don't help at all either to, to help protect the value of your money. Oftentimes they offer you, in the U.S., an average of 0.04% interest for holding your savings with them. 
And that is nuts to think about, that the money that you have already earned just by sitting in the bank account and doing nothing with it is losing value because of the centralized system and the way that they handle your money. And then the banks have the audacity to lock your money in whenever there's mass panic and withdrawals because they don't want to be losing money on the capital that they have control over. Even though they don't control currency in the same way that banks and governments do, I do think that it's worth identifying employers as part of a centralized system as well, because they do control the, uh, the amount of wealth that is distributed among the people. So in a centralized system, you, you kind of have to rely on employers to fairly evaluate the value of your labor. And if that's not happening, the centralized system might not be for you. So if you are someone that trusts the institutions in power in a centralized system, there's not really much that I can do to convince you to jump onto the crypto bandwagon. Cryptocurrency was designed because of the lack of trust in these systems, that they don't do what they were supposed to do. Trust isn't really a factor when it comes to cryptocurrency. It's, it's really more about understanding the space than anything. The reason I say trust isn't really a factor in crypto is because transparency exists on a far greater scale than anything that exists in the centralized system. The economics of crypto coins, or tokenomics as it's commonly referred to in the space, is transparent from the very beginning. It's released in the white paper at the very start of a project. So if you don't understand cryptocurrency, I completely understand. It is more than overwhelming to transition from a system that doesn't really want you to understand the mechanics of the economy versus a project that gives you all of the information from the get-go. The best way to get to know the space, in my opinion, is to just jump in. Pick a project that you're interested in, follow the project as information comes out, and learn and understand as you go. Let's move on to my second point as to why you should not invest in a cryptocurrency, which is that you are entirely comfortable with the amount of money that you make. Now, I very much understand this point if you're somebody who's retired, but you might also be somebody that just doesn't care about having a bigger house or a nicer car, and I'm right there with you. For me, it's not about being able to afford a mansion or a Lamborghini. It's about breaking free and, and entering into a space of financial freedom so that I don't have to worry about being forced to trade my time for money in order to survive. I'm trying to break free from the cultural capitalism uh, that, that encourages you to work harder instead of smarter by making the free market capitalism work for you. There's a variety of passive income opportunities in the space, and it's still very, very early with a ton of room to grow. All right, let's talk about volatility, because this always seems to be the very first concern that I show all over the internet, concerns from my friends, and all over the media as to why you should not be investing in a cryptocurrency. And I understand why volatility could be a factor for somebody who's like a day trader, who buys and sells things on a daily basis in order to make money. But I'm actually rather surprised that this is a factor for potential investors that have not yet entered the space. And the reason I'm surprised is because you don't actually lose money unless you sell. The ups and downs can be emotional from a day-to-day -day view, but investors don't measure from a day-to-day -day view. Investors measure from point A to point B. And while point A does take some thought in making sure that you, you put in a, a good entry point, point B is completely in your control. You don't lose money unless you sell. Almost always, from a year-to-year -year view, the value of cryptocurrency is always moving upwards in the thousands of percents. There have been a couple of exceptions where the price has been much lower than the price before, but it always continues with upward momentum with explosive gains above the all-time highs that exist in the cryptocurrency space. The issue may very well be that people think that when they put in $100 and then a week later when they see that their portfolio shows $70, they think that they've lost money. 
And my advice to you in that is to not look at cryptocurrency as, as money, as, as currency. It's a little bit of a misleading term, but you should think of it more as an alternative to gold. You should think of it more as an appreciating asset that will go up in value over time. If you watch my previous video, you'll see that there are a lot of what are called bullish indicators, uh, which are events that are going to jack up the price, like big players entering the game or real world practicality coming into the space. And now may be a very good entry point because of those things, unless you are completely content with the amount of money that you make. And lastly, my third point as to why you should not enter the cryptocurrency space, which is you do not care about the environment at all. By now, you're probably thinking that these points are a little manipulatively worded. And while you may be correct, cryptocurrency, even some of the most energy efficient cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, are likely some of the most energy efficient assets in the history of humanity. To be fair, Bitcoin mining does consume over half a percent of the world's electricity. But the absolute lowest estimate of how much Bitcoin mining electricity runs on hydropower is about 39%. The highest estimate sits somewhere at like 73%. So it's, it's pretty safe to say that about half of Bitcoin mining electricity consumed is completely carbon neutral. Electricity consumption aside, I do think that it is a far more fair evaluation to compare Bitcoin to other top assets energy to value production ratio. According to Michael Saylor at the Bitcoin conference in Miami last week, Google spends $180 billion worth of energy in order to produce about $1.7 to $1.8 trillion worth of asset. Compare that to Bitcoin, which spends about $4 billion of electricity per year. Half of that is carbon neutral, and it's able to produce $800 billion worth of asset. That means that Bitcoin gets a energy to value ratio of 1 to 200. Compare that to Google that gets a 1 to 10 ratio. If you compare it to the entire S&P 500, you get a 1 to 4 ratio. If you compare it to big banks like JP Morgan, you get a 1 to 3.8 ratio. And if that's too many numbers and is too confusing for you, let me just put it this way. Bitcoin is 50 times more energy efficient than its nearest competitor. And if that's not concerning enough, mining gold is 50 times more expensive than mining Bitcoin. And gold mining does rely heavily on fossil fuel energies. Not only is it wildly dishonest to say that cryptocurrency is bad for the environment, but it's also hypocritical and incredibly counterproductive to the pursuit of green energy. But if you don't care about the environment, cryptocurrency might not be the space for you. And you know what, I, I do have a, a fourth bonus point to round the video off, which is that you don't have any extra cash to invest. I considered not including this point at all in this video, but it is something that I wanna bring up because I want people to thrive and I want them to get out of their own head in order to be able to enter this space. And I do understand that there are people out there that, that legitimately can't afford to eat. And I completely understand that. Those people are not the people that I'm trying to be real with right now. If you would have invested $100 into Ethereum just a year ago, you would currently be sitting on $1,000. And if you would have went riskier and jumped into a, a startup project at $100, you could be sitting on something like $4,000 to $10,000 right now. Of course, if you tried to sell it right now, you'd be sitting on a big chunk of taxes, but that's not really the point. The point is that a little bit can go a long way in this space, and there is a lot of room to grow. I actually try not to spend any of my actual income on cryptocurrency. I, I do some side stuff like door dashing and selling some stuff and some side hustles to get something like 50 to $400 a week to invest in crypto. 
And the reason that I find that to be worth it, to, to work extra hours beyond my regular 40 hour job that pays less than, than what my regular job does is because that 15 to $20 that I could be earning doing DoorDash or selling stuff or whatever it is could be turned into $100 an hour, maybe a year or two years down the road. So that's it for this video, and if any of these points did not apply to you, and you are looking for a way to get into this space, I have a few easy ways for you to get started. My first recommendation for beginners is always Coinbase. It's the best for beginners, best on security, and after your first $100 deposit, you can get $10 back for free. Beyond that, you can utilize their reward program and get $30 of free crypto just for watching some videos. You can sign up with my link down in the description below. My second recommendation is the Crypto.com app, which if you use my link down in the description below, you can get $25 for free of their Crypto.com coin, which is the native currency on that app. My third recommendation is Binance, which has the lowest fees, widest selection of cryptocurrencies, and is the biggest exchange on the market. To sign up with them, I have a link down in the description below for that as well. My fourth recommendation is Gemini, which you can also get a free $10 reward after your first $100 deposit. They've got a fantastic analytics program and you can sign up with my link down in the description below. Remember, never to invest more than you can afford to lose. Be sure to buy low, sell high, learn as much as you can, and play for the late game. Thanks for watching.